So we're going to begin this process by looking at a uh, user input using an Xbox 360 controller. And in order to do this, we need to set it up. So the way that user input works in X in X and A is actually pretty straightforward. Every update, we simply get the current status of that input device. So for example, we say, okay, what are all the buttons pressed of the Xbox 360 controller? Or what are all the buttons pressed of the keyboard? What is the current location and click bunk click uh, status of a mouse. We have to get that manually and we have to do it once per update. If we don't do it every single update, again that data will become stale, it will be old data. So we need to make sure that we are always getting the state at the very top of our update code. So we've already seen this before in XNA. If we look at the gamepad.getState uh, functionality, which is already here for us, we use this by default, it's to exit the program if the user puts the back button of the player one controller on the gamepad. Now this is fine the way this is done. The problem runs and what if you want to check more than the back button? That means that every time you want to check another button you have to type in this whole thing gamepad.getState player index dot one and then continue on with the rest of the stuff. Of course this isn't what we want to do. We want to make sure that we can handle this um, very simply. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable that can store this state and then we only have to get the state once at the beginning of the update and we continue to use that state for the rest of the update. If we get it every single time then what we're doing is we're running we're just adding extra code for no reason both in lengthwise as well as efficiency. So what we're gonna do is globally we're gonna create a variable up top a global variable of course and this variable is gonna have a data type called gamepad state and I'm just going to call it gamepad1 and the reason why I'm calling it gamepad1 is because I'm talking I'm going to create this state for the first player controller now if I wanted to use multiple controllers I could XNA can handle up to four Xbox 360 controllers simultaneously so I would just have four different ones or I could have an array of gamepads um, in this case I'm just going to use the one so we're going to scroll down to the uh, the update and we're going to modify this code so I said the first thing we need to do is get the state so in order to do this we just need to say okay gamepad1 is equal to gamepad dot get state so it gets the current state of the controller we gotta talk about which controller we're talking about here in this case it's the first player controller so player index 1 and that's it now we have the state of gamepad1 and it's going to happen at the beginning of update every single time through the game loop. So we can actually replace this whole thing here with gamepad1. And it'll work just fine. Now, the Xbox 360 controller is a very complex piece of hardware. It's got a lot of buttons and gadgets and doohickeys on it that we need to be able to monitor. Now, of course, we only care about the ones we're going to use for our game. So we're not going to check anything that's irrelevant to us. So for example, if my game never uses the big X button on the Xbox controller, I'm not going to check for it. I'm just going to ignore the fact that it even exists. So I don't have to deal with it anymore. So what we could do, or what we're going to do, is just look is just uh, look generally at how we can interact with all these buttons. And then it's up to you to add the logic based on what should occur when that button is pressed. So for example, in your game, if the A button should make your character jump, when that A button is pressed, you need to set up the proper data and the proper conditions so that character will start jumping inside that if statement. So, what we need to be careful about is the way that we set up our if statement. So, if we use an just if we use a separate if check for each individual button, what that essentially is saying is that it's possible to be holding multiple buttons at the same time. So, for example, you might be holding both the trigger as well as the B button at the same time, and that's okay because that's the way you had your program set up. No problem. Now, so your program might be using that as a modifier. So for example, if they're holding right trigger when they hit the B button, maybe they use one weapon. But if they're, if they're holding the right trigger and they hit the A button, maybe they use a different weapon. So that is an option that you can set up. So that's what happens when you use separate if statements for every single button check. However, if you use an if else if system, as opposed to or a switch or a switch case what that's going to set up is the fact that you can only have one button pressed at a time or it will only detect one button pressed at a time 
And depending on the order that you set that up, actually you won't be able to use a switch case, you'll have to use anything else. Um, you, depending on the order you set that up, it's going to go into the first one that's true. So if you if you checked A and then B and then X and then Y, if you have both A and B press at the same time, it's always going to go into A. It's never even going to know that B exists because you're not going to access it. So you got to be careful about the way you set that up. Typically speaking, separate if statements is what you're going to be what you're going to be using. But uh, again, that's going to depend on the application you create. So now the next step is well, how do we handle all these different types of buttons? Well, you need to understand that the Xbox 360 controller actually has two types of input on it. It has what we call digital input, and that's standard for buttons. It's either pressed or it's not pressed. There's no partial. The other thing is an analog input, an analog, which is why sometimes you hear them called analog joysticks. What that means is that it can be partially, partially tilted or all the way tilted. Right? We have a range of level of tilt. The same thing for the triggers on the Xbox 360 controller. It can be pressed, it can be slightly pressed, or it can be very pressed. We have a whole bunch of degrees of pressing for those triggers. Now the analog input you're not just checking to see whether it's depressed or not. You're actually going to check the value of it so you can use it in your programs. Let's start simple though. Let's start with a button. You can see here right now we're checking for the back button. And later on we might check for, say for example, the B button or the A button. So if I wanted to add another check, I would just follow the same process that you see above. If gamepad uh, pad one dot buttons dot, let's say the B button is equal button state dot pressed then I can do whatever it is I want to do in there. Right? Now you notice there's other options too, whether it's unpressed or whether it's pressed, so we can check to see whether they've released a button or whether they're not even holding it at all. It's up to you and how you want to do that in your game. There's also the D-pad. If you don't know what the D-pad is, it's, that it's, it's short for digital pad. So it's like uh, the little cross on the bottom left of your, or on the top left of your controller, which um, allows you to handle up, down, left, right movement. That's it. That's what it does. It's a it's a um, a vintage type of input that's been in there for a while, and it's very useful in standard scrollers and as well as uh, navigating menus and things like that because it's very quick to use. Now, each you you need to understand is up, down, left, and right. Those are actually all considered separate buttons. But just like our um, B button or whatever else, we can still get that data. So we could do something like this: if gamepad one dot d pad dot now I can choose the button maybe I want to check to see whether the left button is pressed if that is equal to button state dot pressed it works the exact same way as the other stuff the only difference is we're not checking the buttons we're checking the d pad okay so that is the standard for all the buttons so you have your a button your b button your x button your y button your start your back your big xbox button your uh, bumpers all those kinds of things are set up and you can manually check each one of those you can actually also check to see whether the left and the right thumbsticks are pressed in because those are actually considered buttons as well where things get tricky is when we start to deal with the analog input what you need to realize is that it's just data so when you want to check the value of an analog joystick or thumbstick what you need to do is realize is that it is going to return you a value somewhere between negative 1.0 and positive 1.0. So what that means is that you either have it all the way pressed or partially pressed. So if it's negative 1.0, that means you're pressing it to, um, if you're checking to see its X value, you're, it means it's moving to the left. So you have it pressed to the left. If it's positive 1 or positive 0.5 or something like that, that means you're pressing it to the right. So we can check both the X and Y of the analog thumbstick. Y obviously means up and down, X means left and right. So we got to understand uh, how we can use this data. So for example, if I'm doing something like this, you wouldn't use it in an if statement. You would just say something like this, game, oops, gamepad one dot thumbsticks dot left. And what that's going to do is this is what's going to return me that value between negative one and positive one. And I might do something like this. Let's say, for example, I had a variable called current speed. And I'm going to set my current speed equal to the value of the left thumbstick multiplied by my, let's say I have a constant called max speed. 
and max speed represents the fastest my character can actually move. So let's say, for example, that maximum speed is 10 pixels per second, and my left thumbstick is pressed to the right halfway, so, it's a, so it returns me a value, value of 0 0.5. So if I take that 0 0.5 and multiply it by my max speed, which is 10, I now have a value of 5. That means my character will move at 5 pixels per second. However, if that, however, if that thumbstick is, has a negative 5 value, meaning it's pressed to the left, that means my speed is negative 5 pixels per second, which means the character will walk to the left. So that's the way we got to actually think about it. Oh, I forgot one piece. Left dot x. So that will do our horizontal movement. Um, so this allows us to handle the analog input. And the same thing works for the triggers. The triggers work in the exact same way. You have a degree of pressing, and you would typically multiply that value by a maximum to get what, you, what value you actually want. So that pretty much sums it up for gamepad input and what you can do with it. Remember, you can handle up to four controllers simultaneously. You'll just remember that you need to get the state of each one at the beginning of the update. So that is Xbox 360 controller input.